Hi, welcome back. This is Excel Video 92. I want to show you two of the tricks that I used to make this chart update automatically in the last Excel video, and then we're going to get even more fancy from there. First trick is notice the three here is in my chart title, so it's easy to tell. If, if I make this a six, my chart title is changing automatically. Here's how I did that. If you look at the chart title, the chart title is simply H cell H14. That's all it is, so it's just equals cell H14. Uh, if you look at cell H14, what I have here is in quotes I have the text, new patients for last, and then a space. So that's going to cover all the way to right before the 6. And then I do the and sign, and then I put in include because this is the name of this cell. And then I put an and sign, and then I put the, the quotes and then a space, so I get a space between 6 and months, and then months in quotes. And then um, anytime, if you notice when I change this from 6 to 9, that changes here and it changes here. You wouldn't have to put this um, it right in the middle of your chart. Once it's once this is up and going, you wouldn't have to show this. In fact, you could do something like this and see how it, you can make it a white background. Now it's black, now it's white. You could even hide the thing if you wanted or hide the cell or you could do lots of things to uh, get rid of that once your chart's ready for prime time. But to make it easier for you to see, I just put it there and all the chart title does is just looking right there at age 14. The other thing we're doing with offset, look at the offset formula. Let's just scroll down here. Last x date is what I'm using to chart the x-axis down here. And the, the reason I did this is a, a lot of the practice management software, when it dumps stuff to Excel, rather than giving you, you know, like April 1st, 2009, it'll put April in one column and 2009 in another. And we could always smash those together and put them in one cell and make it work. But offset can deal with things that are two cells wide and some 30 cells high. That's not a big deal. The way we're going to make it work is this. We're going to define and tell the we're going to find a name called last x date. We're going to tell Excel this is what this last x date is what we want to put on the x axis and here's how it works. The reference that we're going to start with is whatever we define last x as up here, start with that. Whatever that range is, start there. And then don't move any rows, but notice how my columns is moving negative 2. So remember, last x date starts here and then goes down and figures out how many uh, cells we want to include. Minus 2 just says go left two columns. So we're going from this column, we're going over to January. And then all we're going to do is we're going to, after we go left two columns, we're going to go as many um, rows to include as we did up there with the same include thing. And we're going to make the width too wide. Normally, we've done the height or the width has always been one in our previous examples, but it doesn't have to be. This time the width is too wide, so my width here when it's nine is going to go, that's what last x date looks like. And Excel's smart to say, okay, 2009, November 2009, December 2010, January, and it just charts it right away for us because we've got an offset range that's too wide that includes both the month in one cell and the year in another, like a lot of the practice management stuff is going to download for you. So that's the trick. Once we've got that in place, it's that easy and everything just updates, including the chart title. Stay tuned uh, next time. Um, there are cooler things to do than just type in a 6 there. And I'll show you how to make that 6 a little more automatic, a little more interactive, a little more whiz-bang, shazam, all that good stuff next time. Thanks for watching.